Hello, I'm Fruxius, developer of Nias VR, and I have another update for you. This one is pretty exciting because essentially what I've been working on for the past uh, week or so have been, are dynamic bones. And essentially that uh, they are designed to add extra level of interactivity and um, aesthetics to your avatars. So over here, I actually have a simple test. So let me just zoom out the camera a little bit more. So this thing. As you can see, this is essentially a simple procedural response test of the dynamic bones. I'll also switch the camera to group mode so I can move a little bit. So you can see um, it has this kind of like very, like wiggly, springy behavior. And if I move it around, essentially that impairs uh, impairs velocity on the spring. I can I can move it around and you see you see how it behaves. So, but this one is essentially just a simple test, and I would like to showcase uh, uh, how you can set it up on your avatar. So let's put this to the side and let me spawn another copy of my avatar so we can work on it. So over here, um, this is my avatar. You can see essentially that my, uh, if I rotate it around, let me move it a little bit more on the camera. If I move it around the tail, it sort of slowly moves. It has certain dynamics to it, but uh, it's not uh, as accurate. So for example, if I if I rotate it like this, but if I if I move it around from side to side, let me show you from my field of view. If I move it from side to side, you see the tail remains completely stationary. And that's, uh, that's because the tail is currently using a component called Smooth Transform, which only smooths out the rotation. So essentially it completely ignores any positional change. So if I have avatar set up like this, um, I can simply grab uh, a developer tool tip and I will select the tail. So let's find one, there we go. Let's open up the inspector. And you see essentially I have selected a bone chain. And what I'm interested in is uh, over here you can see the component smooth transform. And what I'm, uh, but essentially what I need to do is find the root. So I'm gonna go all the way up the hierarchy until I find the root. There we go. So this is the where the tail this is where the tail begins. And if I essentially want to upgrade this avatar with the dynamic bone. All I need to do is attach a new component, go physics, dynamic bone chain. So currently it is not set up to do anything because essentially it has no bones assigned, but uh, to make things simpler, I've added two options down here. So if I already have existing avatar, which is the smooth transforms, I can very quickly clean all the smooth transform by pressing this button. So I press this. Essentially this gets rid of the smooth transforms for the entire hierarchy. Otherwise, they would essentially end up conflicting with the, with the dynamic bone chain. And another benefit is also because all the bones, you see there's bones list, all the bones are within this component. I don't need to go, I don't need to go to, through every single one and add them individually. If I wanted some unusual setup, I would have to, but if, if I just want to, all, of these, all of these segments to be simulated by this, all I need to do is click setup from children. So I click setup from children. It fills everything, everything out automatically, and I'm pretty much done. Um, so now, if I look at the avatar, is if I rotate, you see the tail moves around. It has this uh, wobbliness to it. Right now, by the default settings, it's a little bit too strong, but uh, that's something you can adjust, and I'm going to show you in a minute. But another important thing is if I move it around, you see positional, positional translation will also essentially affect the rotation of the tail. So uh, moving this way, you can see that it makes it wobble. So this, this should look much more much more realistic, or at least much more aesthetically pleasing than the previous solution. This, still, this feature is still uh, under development. So currently the things that are missing are interactions, so you cannot, you cannot uh, collide with it, you cannot grab it. And there's a few other options that will also uh, appear in the very near future. But I just wanted to show you essentially the progress and give this feature in its current state to you so you can start experimenting and building, building things out. Let's also see what options are there. So another thing I'm going to showcase are the ears. So you can see they are also using they are also using the smooth transforms, but I'm going to replace it as well. So let's open up the ear. Let's go to bit one higher. So again, I do the same thing. I touch a component, go physics, dynamic bone chain. I clean them up. I set up from children. 
uh, let's do it for the right one. The other, the other one is actually good because we can use them for comparison. So let's set up dynamic function, clean them, and set up from children. And now you can see if I move it around, the ears move as well. If I rotate, they also wiggle. Again, like the default settings right now, they're very wiggly, but that is something you can adjust. And actually, that's what I want to show you. Like on the ears, you can see if I move, they go a little bit too much. It's essentially several different things you can try to remedy this. So if I look over here, you have a bunch of different settings. You have inertia, inertia force, dumping, elasticity, stiffness. And you also have like a gravity and a local force. There's going to be some more options in the future, but this is uh, this is essentially the core simulation for now. And I'm going to like be building on top of this. But let's see what these settings do, because like these offer you quite a lot of flexibility. Um, so let's try first increasing the stiffness. And I'm doing that for the right ear, so we can compare. So you can see essentially now this ear it doesn't it doesn't tilt as much, but it still has like this nice nice wobbliness to it. So that's one of the options that you can use. So you can just tweak it and see whatever fits your style. Let's roll all the way back to what we saw before. I want to show you another setting. Another one is elasticity, and essentially that's the force that's applied. Uh, to essentially return the bone chain to its original rotate, like uh, original resting position and rotation. So if I increase this, you can see this ear becomes a little more like uh, jello. So this is while well, this is not what I want, it's also something you could use for for certain things. Uh, I can lower back the elasticity. Another another important option is dumping. Essentially, what dumping does is it's how much of the velocity, like how much essentially of the movement is diminished over a period of time. So if I increase this, you can see essentially it 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 uh, it diminishes very quickly. This is a very sensitive setting, so you might need to change the values slowly. So you can see this one has now it has a little bit of a wiggle, but essentially the the wiggling. You see, like essentially how the how the movement stops very quickly compared to this ear, which keeps wiggling for a while. Let's lower it a little bit more. So you see, this is this actually looks pretty nice. So it still has some some of the wiggle, but it dissipates faster than this one. There's another option. Let me decrease the dumping again. So it has a little bit of more motion. Another one is called inertia force, and essentially what this means is how much of the how much of the velocity of the character when uh, when it's moving or whatever the bone is uh, the dynamic bone chain is attached to, is how much of the velocity is essentially transferred to the chain. And if you if I increase this uh, to a really big number to sort of show the effect, you see essentially when when I move it, this applies a lot more. A a lot, a, lot, a lot more force than there actually is. So essentially this is kind of an elastic effect. But it shows you what it does. If I, if I translate it this way, it essentially creates a force that pushes the whole chain in the same direction that the character is moving. So it's sort of like a velocity transfer. Usually you wouldn't use values that high, but uh, it's good for, for the demonstration. I can also reverse the effect. So if I wanted essentially the effect to be opposite, I can go minus 50. And you see, essentially, this this kind of creates like a like a drag. So essentially, it drags behind in motion. So this is also something you might want to use, like a, in, the, in a lower setting. So you can see if I use this one, it gonna it gonna makes it flail more. But let's head it back to two. And the last thing is inertia. And essentially, inertia. This one is how much of the positional change is completely transferred to the bones without imparting velocity. So if I set this to 1, and if I set inertia force to 0, type 0 here, you can see there is actually no, because like the entire bone chain is completely translated, there's actually no wiggliness from the motion. There's still some when I rotate, but not from the motion. Is because essentially the ch entire chain is completely translated. If I set it to 0 0.5, that essentially means when I translate this like by let's say 20 centimeters to the left, it's as if the chain was completely translated by 10 centimeters. That's the half, and essentially the rest essentially is, is then simulated using the elasticity and the inertia. 
So, I would usually keep this one relatively low, so it has a fair bit of ugliness. So there's a lot of settings, uh, there's a lot of combinations that, uh, with these settings that you can use, so feel free to like to experiment and uh, see whatever you can make with this. But uh, it should be like pretty versatile, and uh, even if you like, you can actually control these properties from logics, including other ones like the gravity and force, which we'll get to in a second. But before that, uh, let's see if there's one more thing I wanted to show. Oh, I think we're actually good with this one. Let me show the other properties on the tail, because uh, currently the dynamic one also supports applying forces, so essentially you can apply force to the chain. So over here I have the I have the inspector for the tail, and there's two ways to apply forces. One of them is gravity, and essentially gravity is a force that's in some space, that's independent, that's usually independent from the character itself, or whatever object uh, the dynamic bone is on. So let me set it to minus 9. It's a little bit too strong, but uh, it shows the effect nicely. So essentially gravity, by default, is in global space. So no matter how the character is oriented, the force essentially is the same. So if I rotate it this way, the force is still downwards. If I rotate it upside down, you can see the tail is still being pulled, uh, pulled downwards. And let's set it back to zero. Another another force is uh, local force, and that's over here. Essentially, this one is relative to the initial bone. So, for example, if I set this one downwards, the same way, this one will remain the same no matter how I rotate the character. So, if I put it upside down, the force is still is going this way because it uh, it follows the orientation of the root bone. These properties are also completely dynamic, so um, as, as with everything in EOS, you can animate these with logics. You can uh, you can create like uh, any kind of setup. So, for example, you could use the force to um, add some extra motion, or even like add extra like wiggliness, or even whatever, whatever essentially you imagine. So, that's pretty much uh, for the current state of the dynamic bone. Uh, there's one more thing. Um, you can also set up the chains by hand. Let me just give you a quick overview. So essentially here we can see the bones list. So for each bone we have a bone slot. We have the original position, the rotation, and there are essentially the drives. Currently I wouldn't recommend doing this by hand. I'm going to add some more options to make it a little bit easier because we need to fill all these in. But I want to make it so essentially you can just drop the, you can drop the object there and it will fill out the rest. Uh, but for most cases using the setup from children is going to be the most common option. However, if you wanted to adjust some of these settings, you could um, you could do that in here. So if I, for example, set this to zero, you can see this is actually twisted now. That's not what I want. Oops. Wait, what was it? Minus 180. Well, I have successfully turned this into an abomination. So let's start over. So there we go. Uh, I have set up this uh, character again. Let's just get, uh, take it for a spin. So I'm gonna swap into this character. So this is my odd one. And let's switch the camera to the group mode so you can better see uh, my movement. So I've, uh, I've, I've left it other defaults, but if I run around, you should be able to see a lot nicer behavior. I'm actually switch it to the purpose, third person, and put a camera behind me so you get like this nice, nice view. So see if I run side to side, this will essentially make both my tail and my ears move. Again, the effect is right now it's kind of, it's a little bit too strong, so you probably need to tweak it for a character, but this should give you a lot more options for making your character look good and um, inside of VR. So this is a feature in its current state, you should be able to get it um, in the latest NEOS build. Um, make sure to join our Discord because that's where I post all of the updates, so you can watch out uh, whenever I update things, whenever I add, add features. Uh, so that's pretty much it. So just, uh, just last thing, I would like to say thanks to our Patreons and also now Twitch supporters, uh, Twitch subscribers and followers, because uh, um, just adjust the camera a little bit, because essentially it's thanks to your support and uh, you being part of this community and helping uh, helping to fund this project and essentially make all of this happen that uh, we can all keep working on this and making features like this. Uh, 
There's a lot more, a lot more things coming from for the dynamic bond. So one of the things you can look forward to is interaction. So for example, uh, touching or even grabbing the the chain. So for example, I could like grab the tail and move it in front. That's gonna come pretty soon. So keep keep an eye on the Discord and. Uh, and, so, and some other like uh, tweaks and features and any bug fixes that you can also find. So you can, uh, if, so, so essentially means you should like what uh, also like uh, when you start like experimenting with it is see what you can create, how can you use it, how can you even use it for things that it wasn't even meant for because that's uh, one of the really cool things about NEOS. And maybe you can essentially use that like to um, give this feature some more polish and even add some more features that I haven't thought of. So. Um, Thank you again very much for watching and uh, for supporting this project and uh, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> I don't know what, what else to say. Well, join, join our Discord, uh, support us on Patreon if you can, watch our official Twitch, uh, Twitch channel. We do regular live streams right now where you can also like hear about these latest features, ask us questions. And it's a lot of fun because we also have interactive Twitch commands, so you can you can essentially type into the chat, flip our gravity, change the lights, change the skybox, and do a lot of funny things. So that's pretty much it. So let me know if you have any questions. Uh, all the links are down in the comments, and I'll see you next time. <gasps> bye bye.